Hey everybody, Dr. Rob Silverman here, Proven Health Alternatives. I've got superstar functional medicine practitioner and coach, if we could use that term, Dr. Sasha Patel. Thanks for coming on. I'm excited to spend some time with you now. Doc, thank you for having me. I'm super thrilled about this conversation as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to come right out of the box. Uh, I was just telling you, I read your book and I recommend it for all functional medicine practitioners, whether they've been doing it for 30 years or if they've done it for 30 seconds. So it's called The Perfect Practice. It's a nice, easy read. We were talking about it. You're going to pick it up. You're not going to want to put it down. You're going to finish it. And then you're going to read it again. And you're going to write down some of the more salient points that are so applicable to everybody's life. So the first thing I want to ask you is the book. Why'd you write the book? Tell everybody. Well, great question. You know, it started off as many people asking me, have you written a book? Have you written a book? And uh, I went to a book writing conference uh, hosted by my friend, Mike Koenigs. And this was the book that I wanted to capture. And it was almost like a legacy project. Like, where can I capture my best ideas? Where can I share them? And then how can I help as many people uh, get this information so that they can start applying it? And a book was a way to do that. And it was a way to build credibility for me. As many of you know, it's a great credibility builder. It's a next generation business card, if you will. And it also served as a way for me to help people without having a, an extensive conversation with them or without them attending a webinar and putting it all in one place in writing so they could dog ear it. They could open it up anywhere and learn valuable tips and nuggets. It's not one of those books that you read from cover to cover. You could open it up and flip it open to any page or go to the chapter that you need some support with in your business. And uh, nobody had done that for me. So I, you know, I figured other people probably wanted something like that. And it instantly became, you know, a crowd favorite. And, and so we've been trying to get it as many hands as possible and, and um, people seem to enjoy it. It's one of those books that you actually finish, which is the cool thing is, is that each chapter is just a couple pages long and it gives you very pinpoint, uh, you know, information. And I actually wrote a book that I would read. That was the other thing is I wanted to make sure it was a book that somebody who doesn't have a ton of time, somebody who's very coachable and teachable could take it, run with it and start applying it in their business right away. Absolutely. The easy read, great read. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, I got to learn something about you and I thought your hit, you know, your history, your Cairo history is really compelling. So you came out and you, like all of us, we want to set the world on fire and you did. Mm -hmm. So you work for somebody and they got an opportunity to get on TV and uh, it just wasn't their thing. So you went out there, you know, excited, uh, probably had some innate uh, charm, if you will, because, you know, you're a big public speaker. I went out there and admitted, you know, what a great story. The phones are ringing. So you took this 180 degree turn to a different kind of practice. And then something happened. And again, it's that, that functional chiropractic is a calling. Somebody treated you. Somebody touched you and drew you into chiropractic. And then through the trials and tribulation of practice, you found out the real way to help people was to get to the proverbial root cause resolution. So share with people, you know, your, your plight a little bit. It's fascinating. Yeah, sure. So going back to the story, my boss at the time was invited to be on the news. She had been on TV prior to that and froze on live television. Mm -hmm. So because of that, she didn't want to go back on and, and, and kind of go through that experience. She was traumatized by it. And she passed the baton on to me. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And here I am. You know, I see the I see the certifications behind you. I was within, within an ART practice, and it was strictly focused on soft tissue injuries, repetitive strain injuries. Obviously, we were getting amazing results, as many ART practitioners do. But we were working with some of the healthiest people in our community, people who are active, hurting themselves, you know, running marathons, hurting themselves, playing sports at a really high level or or training or practice, things like that. So these were healthy people from a biochemistry standpoint, right? They just had structural issues and challenges. The story that ran was about elbow pain. And we had so many people calling in. Turns out only one of them had elbow pain, and it was actually caused by her arthritis that she was experiencing. And as these people started coming in, we didn't really do a good job filtering them because they shouldn't have been in our practice. But I'm glad they did because it, it really started helping me understand the limitations of what I could offer, offer people. But more importantly, because you can't help everybody, but it showed me the limitations of the current medical model at that time. And these people had seen everyone, tried everything, and nobody was able to help them. And thank God for, you know, spam emails and stuff like that. I started getting emails from uh, Dr. Ron Grisanti 
Mm -hmm. And many of the cases that he was presenting were actually the cases that I was turning down and cases that nobody else was able to help. So it prompted me to learn about this. And I, I told myself, you know, hey, I wonder if this could potentially help myself in the future or somebody that I love and care about. Took the training and really never looked back. However, my boss at the time didn't want to advance her practice. And that, that was her decisions. Uh, that, I totally get that. And she was niched down into soft tissue injury. So no harm, no foul. But I realized that it was the direction that I wanted to go in. So we sort of slowly started incorporating supplementation. You know, And what I realized is that by asking the right questions, the people that were coming to see us with structural issues also had you know, uh, issues with digestion, issues with energy issues with brain fog issues with you know autoimmune conditions thyroid issues metabolic issues that we were not really doing anything for so you know i saw the opportunity there and again she didn't so then we parted ways i started working for another company and then worked there for a few years and then started my own practice so that's where we are now and then i practiced in westchester ohio later moved my wife and family back to toronto where i'm from started another practice here in Toronto and my practitioner colleagues started kind of noticing like, Hey, how are you doing this? What are you doing? They love the messages we were putting out there. And then that created interest. And then that turned into uh, what I do now, which is a coaching practice. Right. You're the CEO of living proof Institute. That's correct. You want to give a little background on that? And sure, then we'll begin sure. Some questions that everybody wants to have answered. What can they do for their practice? Things like that. Yeah, sure. So there's there's two businesses uh, that I run. One is Living Proof Institute, and, and that's like a uh, more of a clinical practice. And then Perfect Practice is our coaching practice. And that's where I spend about 80 to 90 percent of my time. The Living Proof Institute, uh, my wife actually now heads up there. We've got coaches that work with us and we've got an amazing team that supports that business. So Living Proof is centered around this idea that the doctor of the future is the patient. And with advancements in genomics, advancements in wearable technology, advancements with the internet, for example, you know, we want to help decentralize and democratize health. We want to bring it into people's homes where ultimately it, be, it belongs. And when they come to see us as clinicians or as chiropractors, as functional medicine practitioners, wh whatever our title is, they're coming in and they're, they're much better educated, much better informed, much more self-aware so that the work that we do is far more effective, right? Somebody comes in for structural care even or an inflamm or inflammatory joints, you know, that person is going to be far worse off or recover, you know, much more slowly if they have all these other challenges in their life, like not going to bed on time and an inflammatory diet, you know, high stress levels. So our goal is, is to really help empower people, help them become their own best doctor and then use the body as technology. So we use, and this is from my chiropractic philosophy, how do we tap into innate intelligence? How do we realign people with their circadian rhythm? How do we get them sleeping better? How do we get them more parasympathetic? How do we measure and track these things and get them to do, you know, 10 things, 10% better instead of one thing, 100% better, because that we find just leads to failure. So we tap into the compound effect. We teach people how to use this billion dollar body get it to work for them, and then really help them understand that your body's never, you never have to fight disease. Your body doesn't want to be sick. Your body wants you to be healthy and vibrant and happy. And getting healthy should feel like rolling a boulder downhill, not rolling a boulder uphill. Getting sick is like rolling a boulder uphill. You actually have to try to get sick, right? Uh, but getting healthy should be relatively easy. We also tap into this, this idea that the greatest sign of sophistication is simplicity. And, you know, Leonardo da Vinci quoted this, Steve Jobs echoed this, and then I'd like to echo it as well, because we're tapping into the most sophisticated instrument in the entire cosmos, which is a human body, which means it should be really simple and easy to take care of. And so if we're, we're abiding by some of the laws of nature, then the simpler we can keep it, the more affordable it is, the more accessible it is the more we can teach it even within the family unit. So one of the things that we pride ourselves on is when somebody comes and works with us, their entire family gets uh, healthier through osmosis and through the lessons that we teach them. And, uh, and they're then able to create generational health, right? 
You know, we don't want to wait until somebody gets sick to do something. We don't want their children coming in with the same problems. We want them to go back and teach their entire family and role model for their family what it's like to be healthy and vibrant. And we have to embody that too. And that's why it's called Living Proof. So we do that through group programs. Mainly, we have an amazing metabolic program that clients go through that's, you know, uh, you know, 80 to 90% self care strategies, we pair them with wearable technology, and we coach them through a very, yep, I see you got it there, the aura ring, we coach them through a process so that they are now tapping into the foundations of healing. And they can see radically, they can see the difference, they have such a nice short feedback loop that they know right away, is this working? Is this moving me in the right direction? And if it is, it reinforces the behavior. And if it isn't, then it allows us to troubleshoot and work with them and get very granular and specific with the lifestyle recommendations we give them. Fabulous. And you know what, that, that encompassed it so much. I want to unpack a little bit. And it's interesting because you're talking about the patient. So for me, that emphasizes patient first. And, and we all know that that's the key to being a good doctor, patient first. The second thing is we all need patient adherence because if a patient doesn't adhere to our protocols, the whole system fails. So that, that is outstanding. And I, I love the idea about the, um, the environmental health, as you alluded to, generational health. What you do now sets the standard for your ancestors, if you will, the next generation. And, and, and the reason I brought up environmental, you, you look at something like a BPA and how, how it can damage three generations and the wearables. And I just did that. I don't you know, I don't have any stock in Aura. There's such great wearables. They're fabulous to ascertain where you are. And I, I think your message is so different because when I speak to so many practitioners and functional medicine practitioners, what's the protocol? Mm -hmm. Which supplement do you give? Which oil is better? And it's all important, but what's critical, what's essential, and I know you're going to piggyback on this, is the experience. The patient has to have a good experience. The patient has to have trust and be willing again to adhere. So uh, you spoke about that in your book a little bit. So uh, I'd like you to take that to the next level. Yeah. So experience is everything, you know, and one of the things that we want to try to create is as practitioners is a referral centric practice, right? We want to make sure that we're getting as many people to tell their friends and family about us as possible, because relationships collapse timelines, relationships take something that might take three years of your marketing to do one conversation can collapse that timeline uh, within minutes, right? Hey, here's a number, you know, call Dr. Rob, right? Or call Sachin or call whoever it is that the practitioner is call you, right? The thing that I learned over the years is that it's the experience that people refer based on not the outcome or the result. And this is a hard lesson because you can create amazing uh, outcomes for people. And then you're kind of scratching your head, you know, wondering why aren't they sending every single person that they know they lost 50 pounds. Like, and then we're like, what, what's going on, right? What's wrong with this person or what's wrong with me? We start questioning that. And what I discovered is that people refer based on experience. And so one of the things that we have to be careful of as practitioners is that what's really native to us is very foreign to most people, right? When you hand somebody a box and say, Hey, I want you to poop in this box, right? There is a friction point there because they may have never done that before. If you say, Hey, I want you to, you know, dehydrate yourself and pee in this uh, cup and transfer it to this cup and then put it in your freezer until somebody comes to pick it up. That's a foreign concept, right? They might be very, very uh, confused by that process, or they might be overwhelmed by that process. And they might be like, you know what, I was going to send my aunt, but I don't think she could do this. I don't think she's willing to do this. And then guess what, the referral is no longer on the table anymore, despite the fact that that person gets amazing results. So any point in our process where there's friction, we want to make sure that the client feels supported. We want to make sure that they can visualize their mom or their aunt going through that process so that when they refer them, they have a positive experience. Remember, a referral is an extension of that relationship. So if I refer someone to you, uh, Dr. Rob, then the, the thing I have to be aware of is, does this referral increase my rapport with that person? Or does it decrease my rapport with that person? Because we only send referrals when our rapport increases. 
So we have to make sure that the clients that come to us through that process are in really good hands. The clients that we take through on our journey are in really good hands. And we want to let them know from the very beginning that my goal is to create a, uh, you know, kind of a seamless experience for you where you get amazing results and you tell everyone that you know, if at any point you feel like that is being compromised, then I want you to let me know. I have an amazing team. We have lots of experience. We're here to help you and we're here to help you get unstuck anywhere along the way. And one of the things that we did is uh, we actually created, you know, simple pages that people can go to on our website that walk them through how to do the lab testing. That's one example, right? You can also create a really simple, um, you know, automation so that when somebody gets a test kit that they know who to contact if there's a problem. They know, you know, what the lab numbers are, like they're not confused. And sometimes, especially us being in Canada, sometimes shipping things to the US creates a lot of customs paperwork and all that stuff. So we had that video is explaining exactly how to do all that. So try to evaluate your business processes and see if there's any friction along the way. Those friction points are referral killers. So even serving your existing clients, past clients, asking them, hey, where can we improve and refine this process can be critical to unlocking, you know, more and more referrals, especially because I'm assuming that all of you are getting amazing results, right? If you're not getting amazing results, then we need to figure that out first. But if you are getting amazing results and you want more referrals, just remember people refer based on experience. And the cool thing about referring based on experience is they can refer right away. So when somebody's referring based on results, they might have to wait six months or a year and the, the re referral is hinging on the result. Right. Some people will say, hey, I think my, this could help my mom or help my aunt, but I'm going to wait until I get a result before I share it with them. So now that person, depending on their compliance level, hopefully they get a result and they refer others, but it might take six months to get to that point. Imagine we could create extraordinary experiences for people right from the very beginning and get them raving and ranting about us from day one of when they engage with us. That's, that's great. And, and the tools are fabulous. Like you said, they're on the website. You also have, and I think it's very valuable, a consumer guide to choosing a functional medicine practice. It's a 16 page guide. So it's really a great resource for patients because clearly part of the experience is to inform the patient. Mm -hmm. So um, of course, I'd love you to touch upon that. And also somebody said this, I want to know how you feel about it. If health was for sale, no one could afford it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true, right? I mean, health is wealth, they say, but truly, uh, nobody could afford what it truly means to be healthy. There's no amount of money that people would give to be healthy. And one thing I always remind people is that healthy people never complain about what it takes to be healthy, right? Mm -hmm. It's usually the unhealthy people who aren't experiencing health that complain about, you know, eating healthy is expensive, or I don't have time to do this, or, I don't have time to do that. It's the people that are enjoying health that appreciate the value of it. And, you know, health is priceless, right? There is, really isn't a price that we can put on it. So it's priceless in so many ways. Um, what, was the, what was the question you asked me before that? Sorry. About I, the, you know, the consumer guide to choosing yes, a consumer guide. medicine practice. Yeah, great, Thank you. great tool. So, so the consumer guide, I actually learned that from Joe Polish. And Joe Polish is uh, one of the marketing legends uh, of our time, most connected man in the world. And he used to run a carpet cleaning company. And what he did that revolutionized his business is he created a carpet cleaning guide that helped people make informed decisions when it came to cleaning their carpets, right? What red flags to look for, what cost, uh, you know, what corners they don't want to cut, you know, what are some of the, um, you know, things, signs and, and symptoms of somebody who's not going to do a good job, right? Like what are, what are the criteria that, a avid consumer needs to uh, investigate in order for them to make an informed decision. And then of course you are the right decision, right? So we created this consumer guide a few years ago and it's been great because it allows our customer to be more educated. And what I fear is an uneducated consumer. What I crave is an educated consumer because then it makes us the most obvious choice for them because we're addressing all of those red flags. We're not cutting any corners. And we are the ones that are defining this category or this industry for them. So we become the gold standard. So allowing that, um, that documentation to get into people's hands is really valuable because now they're making more informed decisions. And nine times out of 10, they'll choose us. But if not, 
regardless of who they choose, they're asking the right questions. And, and that to me is the most important thing because it preserves the uh, credibility of the industry as well. Absolutely. You know, I think right now for us as chiropractors who do functional medicine, if you will, I think that this is the forefront with this health pandemic. I mean, it's been 18 months and we don't have to get into the politics of it because we're not politicians. We're healthcare practitioners. Obviously, there's a multitude of patients sitting in front of everybody not knowing where to go. Mm -hmm. Those who have had COVID, those who are trying to avoid COVID, and then those who have been vaccinated that are concerned um, about their health. And the issue in, in America, you guys in Canada, you, if we're one, when I say one, if we're the unhealthiest industrialized country, you're about three or four. So, you know, you're, you're coming up real strong on us. Uh, you know, Americans, 42% of Americans are obese, 75% of Americans are overweight or obese. Uh, only 12% of Americans are metabolically healthy. And when you really look at it, it may be something that we never talked about enough, the immune system. And the imbalance in the immune system with the tie into the gut may be the root cause of a lot of our issues. And the chiropractor who's able to offer non-medical um, suggestions, but able to do everything that's natural and alternative, if you will, to help uh, the patient, I believe we now have, can take that step forward and go from 15% of the population to 30% of the population. You know, they say when you treat 20% of the population, you're the new thing. We're going to be the new kettlebell, if you will. <laughs> so can you tell how your program, if you don't mind, just really sits perfectly in alignment with the times, you know, the health pandemic? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I learned from James Chestnut, who you might be familiar with, is mm -hmm. that the world doesn't need more drugs, nurses, doctors, it needs more healthy people. And so that became, you know, kind of my vision statement is how do we create more healthy people? You know, uh, it's great that eventually, and I don't think it'll ever happen because it violates the laws of nature, but let's just assume we have a cure for cancer at some point. You have to have cancer first to benefit from the cure, right? Right. So it, it just doesn't make sense to me that we could be happy about something like that. We should be happy when people don't develop or have these diseases in the first place, because living a life that creates a disease or an illness means you're potentially not living your best life. And sometimes I understand that happens knowingly. Sometimes that happens unknowingly, but it does happen. And there's always a root cause. There's always a mechanism. So our philosophy is how do we create more healthy people? How do we create more self-actualization? How do we teach people how to use this billion dollar body? And I think everyone can get behind that. I'm not saying that we'll never need drugs, that you'll never need surgery, that you'll never need, you know, our kind of our military and industrial medical system, but there's nothing in there that actually promotes health. In fact, every drug would make you sicker, right? Every surgery, every, the people don't have illness because they have too many body parts, right? They don't have an illness as you would probably say this too, is because they don't have a headache because they have an Advil deficiency. There's something mechanistically that's going on that we need to address. And so the average person is so far removed. You think about like almost, you know, three quarters of the population is overweight or metabolically unhealthy. Um, think about how far removed the average person is from what it means to be even remotely healthy, right? So the way we look at our program is that we try to get people to the 80 yard line. We want to get them into field goal range so that anything else they do, whether they take supplementation, whether they, you know, uh, see a structural practitioner, like a chiropractor, whether they're looking to get rid of their dysbiosis and parasites in their gut, it all works better. Even if they're looking for surgeries or medications, if they need them, it all works better when you have this strong foundation to work off of. And that strong foundation can be built within the comfort of your home. And in fact, that's the only place you can build it, right? We don't create health in our practices. We create transformations and shifts in people's behaviors and understandings, but ultimately it's the action steps that they take when they leave your office. That's what's going to be deterministic in their health. And how cool would it be that instead of waiting 50, 60 years until somebody gets sick and then doing something about it, how cool would it be if that person uh, could have great health their entire life and encode that into their children. I mean, that's really the only solution that I can think of to solve this healthcare crisis, right? 
we don't have and we never will have a system that can save us from ourselves. That's, so that's not even a solution. It's not a viable solution. We need to create more healthy people. And the ways to do that, one is through education, uh, low-hanging fruit, giving people simple, passive things that they can do. Like an example is, hey, you already breathe. How about we get you breathing right? You already sleep. How about we get you sleeping right? You already poop. How about we get you pooping in the right position? You already think. Let's get you thinking more positive, right? You already eat. Let's get you chewing your food so you can actually digest it. Really simple foundational things that instantly turn people's health around and transform them. Things that they're already doing, but we're getting them to do them 10% better. So really tapping into this compound effect. And then because the, th the technology is the body and everyone has a body, they could teach it to their kids. They could teach it to their spouse. So we get a lot of, um, you know, kind of collateral, the opposite of collateral damage, which is collateral benefit. And, you know, we'll have, you know, women go through our program. They'll lose 20, 30 pounds. Their husband, who's not even in the program, just following along and be bathing in the same environment, if you will, yeah. they lose 20 to 30 pounds. So it's just so cool to see these types of transformations without supplements and without any testing. And then, you know, that gets them to the 80 yard line. And if they need additional support, if they still have some residual issues, if they still have some more work to do, then in the case of our practice, we refer them out to other practitioners, someone like yourself even, and uh, then they can get that more granular workup done. But we found that the majority of people, you know, 80% of people will get fantastic results, making them healthy, but then more importantly, giving them a long-term strategy that only gets better over time. And so we believe heavily in, in teaching these skills over just simply recommending pills. Now, if you have skills and the right pills, then you can have rapid transformation. But if you only use the pills and you don't develop the skills, then you've just created a dependency, right? It's just a crutch and you're never going to experience true, full, robust, uh, and abundant health, which is what I know both of us want for people. Uh, absolutely. So you're, you're talking about lifestyle. I mean, let, let's just get to it. We need to help mm -hmm. change people's lifestyle. And uh, that is what the functional medicine doctor is. He gets to root cause. And one of the key components is lifestyle. Um, what are some of your favorite self-discovery tools for health? All right. So I really love um, Aura Ring because I feel like it gives people a sense of awareness when they otherwise wouldn't have it. So when you're sleeping, you have no self-awareness, right? You're off into dreamland. Hopefully you're dreaming and uh, having nice, beautiful dreams, but you have no self-awareness, right? When you're up and you're about, you know what you're eating, you know what, how much you're moving. You have a sense of what you're thinking. You have a sense of what your environment is like, but when you're sleeping, you're off into a different dimension and you have no idea what your body is doing. So I believe that sleep is one of the lowest hanging fruits. I also believe that it's the most passive and freest thing that we can do. And uh, I also believe that by measuring it and quantifying it and improving it, we can then uh, have a cascade effect on so many other parameters in somebody's health. You know, my mentor, Charles Poliquin, the late Charles Poliquin said that the first question he would ask any one of his elite clients is not how much they bench or how much they squat or how many chin-ups they can do. He would ask them how well they were sleeping. That was the first question he would ask. So that's, that's become one of the first questions that we ask our clients is having self-awareness around that. So Aura is a great sleep tracking tool and we can get a sense every day. Are we resting? Are we recovering? Is our parasympathetic tone where it needs to be? Are we as resilient as we should be? How hard should I push myself today? Or what are the areas of improvement? And then it also gives us an opportunity to ask questions. So if it took a long time for your heart rate to go down, then maybe you're eating too late, right? If your HRV is all over the place, maybe we need to cut back on certain foods or timing our meals more appropriately. Maybe we need to cut out alcohol. It's amazing to see what happens to people's HRVs on the evenings that they consume any form of alcohol, their HRV just tanks. And that just shows us how stressed out, you know, these behaviors are uh, on our system. So I think that's a that's a great place for a lot of people to start in, in discovering self-awareness. And the other tool that I really love uh, is a spirometer. So a spirometer is a fantastic way to measure lung capacity. And when we have good translation of our diaphragm, that helps move the toxic lymph from our abdomen 
helps kind of, uh, you know, helps us get into a more parasympathetic state, helps us activate and stimulate our vagus nerve. So a spirometer is a way to train the lungs and the lungs and your breath is the master override of the sympathetic system. So we can shift into a more parasympathetic state by breathing correctly. And whether you like it or not, you're going to take, you know, 20 to 25,000 breaths today. And it's low hanging fruit uh, for a lot of people having that self-awareness. Are you breathing through your mouth? Are you breathing through your nose? Is your oral posture, is your tongue in the right position? You know, your tongue is actually a postural muscle. When our tongue is at the roof of our mouth, it actually causes the muscles in our neck to relax because the front of our head is actually structurally supported by the tongue. So simple things like that. Uh, help create self-awareness. So if your lung capacity is, let's say, three liters, very simply by doing right, the correct breathing techniques, you can get it up to five liters and, uh, and practice that. Lung capacity is actually one of the greatest predictors of longevity. So it's super cheap for 26 bucks. You can get a spirometer, super low tech. And then for like you know a couple hundred bucks, you can get an aura ring. And those two things are going to tell you a lot about your uh, resilience and how resilient your body is and then it kind of, then you can play with a whole bunch of different things, right? Like meal timing, you know, calorie restriction, fasting protocols, um, you know, meditation and mindset, connecting with nature, right? Forest bathing, spending time outside, realigning and reestablishing a healthy circadian rhythm, which then reestablishes all of your hormones, right? There are certain pillars that we like to focus on, uh, and those are some of them. Yeah, I, I, it's great uh, conversation point. Um, obviously, I showed you I wore the aura ring too, and it's great because it does measure your sleep. And for me, sleep is the missing ingredient to the functional medicine equation. And you gave some uh, interesting things, HRV, heart rate variability. So we want our heart rate variability to change like this perfect wave. If it's steady like this, just like in the movies, eh, you're dead. So um, HRV is a great tool and we're, now we're talking parasympathetic. We're, we're talking chiropractic, parasympathetic. We're talking medical with the parasympathetic. And it does rate your heart rate variability. It rates your um, breasts. And, and uh, that is a very interesting thing. Um, I will tell you that you're right about the wearables because I watch my wife. And as opposed to even saying hello to me in the morning, the first thing she goes is for the cell phone. Mm -hmm. Let me see how I did last night. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm here. Hi, I just brewed the coffee. <laughs> but nope, she's going for wearables. And the patients all say the same thing. And then it creates an accountability. Going back to what we talk about, the doctor, the future is the patient. It creates that accountability that the patient is going to adhere. And you know what? It's a great baseline. So they should see improvement. Mm -hmm. um, having talking about the parasympathetic. And talking about the vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10, medulla oblongata down through the transverse colon, maybe the most vitalistic nerve in the body. You have something about autonomic pairing. And I think it's really, um, for lack of a better term, I think it's really sexy. Share it with everybody. Sure. Thank you. It's uh, one of my favorite topics to talk about. And, and it really gets people to look at their health through a, a different lens and it, and it clicks right away. So think of it this way. When we're in fight or flight, our body makes an intelligent decision based on what our past experiences, values, and belief system are. So imagine a lion were to walk into my office or let's say your office and you're not a lion tamer, you would immediately think, okay, or at least be programmed to think that and the value and the belief would be that this lion is going to eat me, okay? And so our body immediately based on that sends a message right down the spinal cord and shuts off all of our trunk organs. And that makes sense because we don't need to be digesting the taco we had for lunch. We need to be running. We don't need to be detoxing, you know, pesticides right now. We need to be in a survival state. We need to be uh, shutting off all of these trunk organs and then sending that blood to the arms and legs. So we get this shunting response. The blood has to come from somewhere, right? People say, yeah, your blood goes to your arms and legs. Well, where does it come from? It comes from the trunk. Fun fact, I learned this from Dr. Rakowski uh, from a study that he read and that at rest, 50% of our blood flow goes to our liver and kidneys. In a state of fight or flight, only 5% of our blood goes to our liver and kidneys. So you get a 90% decrease in blood flow to these or important organs. The gut, 80% reduction in blood flow to the gut. Where we send flow is where we send function. So we're going to send blood flow to the arms and legs so we can run or we can escape or we can fight. And that comes at a price. It comes at a price of shutting down nutrient flow 
and function to these internal organs. This is why most cancers develop in the trunk organs, right? People don't come and have finger cancer, right? They have liver cancer, pancreatic cancer, uh, kidney cancer, colon cancer, and it's because there isn't this adequate exchange. Most um, diseases start in the lymphatic tissue. When we can't remove waste, when we can't remove lymph, that's when disease starts to harbor. The biggest lymph nodes in our body are actually underneath our diaphragm. So proper breathing technique and proper translation of the diaphragm squeezes the lymph and keeps it moving within those organ systems. So autonomic pairing is deciding the state you want your nervous system to be in or it, that it's required to be in and pair it with the activity. So for example, if I'm eating in a fight or flight state, which means I might have a deadline, I might have you know, a, a pressing urgent matter going on, I might be eating very quickly, not chewing my food very well, and being in fight or flight, I'm decreasing blood flow to my gut, I'm decreasing function to the digestive system. However, I'm eating my meal and expecting my digestive system to work the way it's designed to with less blood flow. It just doesn't work that way. This is why people have upset stomachs, why they might experience heartburn, why they might get bloating after they eat. It's because they're not pairing their nervous system with the activity. So if I wanna digest my meal better, it might mean that I need to shift gears and go into a parasympathetic state. It might mean that I need to uh, focus on my breath, maybe connect myself to my aura ring and have a quick moment, you know, three, may maybe four minutes of some deep breathing, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose at a six second cadence is gonna get us to drive that parasympathetic tone far more effectively. And now we're actually in a neurological and physiological state to actually digest that meal. Now, keep in mind, they always tell you, don't go swimming after you eat. And that's because when you're swimming, where does blood go? It goes to your arms and legs. And if you just ate, you're going to start cramping because your body is trying to digest that meal. Meanwhile, you're trying to go for a swim and your body's fighting for where that blood's going to go. So that meal takes about two to three hours to digest. And so we don't want to just go from a calm, stress, uh, stress-free state of eating and then go into a high stress situation. We also have to keep in mind that just because we're done chewing, it doesn't mean we're done digesting. And having that cognizance and that awareness, uh, I feel is super important for people. Uh, one other thing uh, that wearable that we recommend to clients, especially those who live in Canada, is a continuous glucose monitor. Mm. And a continuous glucose monitor measures blood glucose every 15 minutes. What's interesting about that is that many times what clients will learn is that their stress actually increases their blood glucose sometimes more than their food. So one of the main functions, as we all know, of cortisol is to raise blood sugar. So if we raise somebody's stress levels, we decrease blood flow uh, to the trunk and, and to these organs, but we also increase blood glucose and insulin resistance as well. So between you know, pairing the nervous system, having that awareness of how do I get into a more parasympathetic state, and then paying attention to you know, their blood glucose and stress levels, it's amazing how much information we can garner about ourselves in a short period of time using very non-invasive uh, tools. Well, I would say the best way to summarize what you just said is the body's all interconnected. Mm -hmm. The systems all communicate. And you convey that message magnificently, letting people yeah. know the body communicates with each other. And it's that communication in that balance, which is truly health. And that is the crux of what we're trying to get to lifestyle to allow everything to communicate. We talked about, or I said, I alluded to the balance in the immune system, but the balance between the nervous system, like you said, you have your fight or flight, you have your parasympathetic. Now I'm big on, on the vagus nerve. I mean, if the vagus nerve is down or its tone is decreased, you're in a fight or flight, you can't digest, usually leads you down a path of leaky gut, can, can contribute, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, et cetera. So with that being said, it's a critical element that the mm -hmm. practitioners during the experience to get their clinical outcomes, let the patient know. How many patients have you had walk into your office or how many times has a practitioner said, yeah, I went to the doctor and I, I got a slip disc. I have a herniated disc. I, I got this thing called IBD. They don't understand. So the explanation like you gave, and I know I'm segueing into what you talk about, explaining, elucidating a clear message to the patient is critical. But you talked about tracking devices. So 
how are you tracking your patient and client outcomes? Great question. So we, we've uh, always debated on the right word to use because people don't like to be tracked, right? They like to be monitored. Uh, <laughs> so we, we monitor them uh, remotely. Um, we have daily check-ins. So people who are in our metabolic program, they have a daily journal that they fill out. And we also have a, a, a software that pulls in all this uh, wearable data so that we can see the direction that things are moving in for them. We can see you know, how much they're sleeping, how much deep sleep, REM sleep, activity, and also what their heart rate uh, and their heart rate variability is. So we're pulling all this data in and we're tracking it over a period of time for them to make sure that they're moving in the right direction. And if we see anything that kind of creates a red flag for us, then we can certainly reach out to the client. So a lot of it is, uh, some of it's them self-reporting, hydration, meals, things like that. And some of it is automatically being reported to us. What we realized, and, and I know you know this too, uh, Doc, is that the, you know, in, in 2020, data became more valuable than oil. So it's the most valuable asset you know, on the entire planet. The data that we have on our clients is demonstrating how powerfully their health is shifting in the right direction. And by tracking this data... We can then demonstrate unequivocally that people's health is moving in the right direction. And the number that we've kind of, the two numbers that we've kind of attached to, uh, which are really easy to measure and not very non-invasive is HRV, because that measures resilience in your nervous system, parasympathetic tone. And basically HRV can be correlated to better mental health. It can be correlated to better digestive health. Really every system in your body is healing better when your HRV goes up. And the other one is really easy to measure, which is blood glucose. Knowing blood sugar levels and how they fluctuate throughout the day is so empowering to people. And with these two tools can really gamify health. I think that's what we need to do is we need to make health more fun. Like just like you and your wife, my wife and I are the same way, right? The first question we ask each other, we don't even say good morning. I got to, I mean, we have to switch this up a little bit, but we actually say, how did you sleep? And then it'll be like, oh, I haven't checked my ring yet or you know, I, I put my ring in airplane mode, so I have to put it on the charger to reactivate it. And sometimes I don't do that until after my wife is up. So uh, a lot of times, you know, we'll be competitive in the sense that, you know, A, like this is my sleep score. This is my activity score. This is how much deep sleep I got. And we're then able to troubleshoot. So my wife, for example, struggles with REM sleep. And when she started taking lion's mane extract before bed, her REM sleep almost doubled. For me, my struggle was uh, restlessness. And I just recently discovered that I'm tossing and turning a lot at night. And it's because I have a, um, and please don't shoot me for saying this, but I have an adjustable base mattress. And I didn't realize how much the electronics were actually affecting the charge in my body every night. So I recently got uh, my space tested for EMF. And it turns out even when that, mattress is not plugged in even when the base isn't plugged in it's still creating you know a higher body voltage than i would like so you know just because we know this stuff it doesn't mean we're not victims of it so now i've got to figure out how to you know how to address this sleeping situation for myself but if it wasn't for my ring i wouldn't know this because i don't wake up tired i don't wake up you know exhausted but i don't want to wake up exhausted somewhere down the road because i'm not getting proper you know, sleep. And if it's something as simple as changing the bed I sleep in or changing out the base of my mattress, then I'm all for it. So I love how even people who are relatively advanced with this knowledge, uh, like myself, I'd consider myself, a, you know, intermediate or advanced user of uh, functional medicine and lifestyle medicine principles. Sometimes we can even become, you know, victims because we don't know this. So Wearable tech gives us the opportunity to explore things a little bit further. And one thing I learned about when I wore my CGM was stressful situations would raise my blood sugar. Checking emails would raise my blood sugar. So sometimes even being in front of an electronic device will raise your blood sugar. Very fascinating. You know, blue light can raise your blood sugar. So what I started doing was I started wearing glasses that actually block blue light because what does blue light do? It raises cortisol stimulates us, which then makes us more insulin resistant. But guess what? When we raise our cortisol, we also raise our blood sugar as a secondary effect. So now you can get people to understand like, why am I eating perfect, but these things aren't changing. And it's because some of these passive environmental factors that are co-contributing to their dysfunction in their body. 
I think that was, uh, again, some really great points. What's very interesting about the detectable is for me, when the patients come in, we have a conversation to immediately go to. So if you will, and I hate to say it, the complaints are not uh, awry. It's, hey, let's look at your detectables. Well, why did that happen? And it mm -hmm. lets that doctor dig right in. And just the glucose monitor is critical because I think you and I would probably agree if there was one specific marker, it would be blood sugar and insulin that is the leader towards inflammation, which is really the problem. Our goal is always to manage and modulate inflammation. And the blood sugar is the biggest issue. And I think you have you in Canada suffer from a similar problem that we do. We have so many added sugars, hidden sugars, mm -hmm. fructose, the sneaky carbohydrate, all these things that you can monitor and you'll say, hey, wait a minute, you know, I had that food. It doesn't say fructose. Yes, but it's in there under another name because the labeling has changed. Obviously, it's not advantageous to your health. So the monitors really empower the doctor of the future, the patient. So I, I know you're super busy, but I really wanted one quick thing about the five stages of a thriving functional medicine practice. If you could give me our epigrammatic approach to it. I think everybody would love to hear that. Yeah. So the first one is awareness, right? Having the awareness, you know, in the market of what it is that you do. And awareness isn't that strangers know what you do or the general public knows that you do. Awareness starts with you having the awareness of what it is that you do, the impact that you can have on people's lives, the value that you can add on people's lives, and then telling the people that are closest to you. A question I often ask people is, if I were to interview your 10 best friends, how many of them could tell me what it is that you do? And most of them are like, probably none. I'm like, well, they need to be aware of what it is that you do because they are human beings. They have bodies. And guess what? They have friends that have bodies and family members who have bodies that will eventually break down or will eventually need your guidance and support. So create that awareness uh, within your immediate ecosystem. And of course, far and wide as much as you can. And that starts with, you know, having a, a strong message being polarizing and really, you know, Patrick Gentempo talks about this. Your, your, your stand is your brand. What is it that you stand for? What is the wrong in the world that you want to write? Are you clearly communicating that and creating awareness around that and consistently spreading that message? The next one is team. So do you have, uh, as you grow, do you have the right team who also believes and aligns with your mission? And initially you might start up, might be you, Maybe your teammate is your spouse or somebody close to you in your family. Hopefully you've got what I call the unfair advantage, which is somebody who's going to be there th with you through thick and thin. And that's for me, my wife, maybe for you, it's your wife too. And, uh, and then, then you build a team based on your weaknesses, not based on your strengths. We like to always hang out, hang around with people who are just like us, but we don't hire people who are just like us. We want to hire our deficiencies. And we use something called the Colby A and we use the DISC scoring method to identify who's going to be a good fit, assuming that they're culturally a good fit. The next one is commitment. Are you committed that this is what you're going to sleep, breathe, and eat? Like I eat, sleep, and breathe functional medicine uh, because it's, I mean, how do you escape it, right? What we do is like something we take with us everywhere we go. Every meal we have is a reminder of what we share with the world. Every you know, activity on a daily basis for me is a reminder of how powerful our message is to the world. Next one is experience. Now, um, experience is more powerful than information. So for all you practitioners out there, it's great to share information, but it's far superior to share experience because information can always be questioned, right? I'm sure, Doc, this has happened to you where you say something, and it's happened to me for sure, where you say something and you find out five years later that, oh, we had it kind of wrong. It was, it wasn't that way. It's actually this way, right? That's information and information can sometimes be used to discredit you or it can be questioned or people can be skeptical of it. But when you share experiences, Hey, my patient lost 50 pounds in six weeks. Well, that's not, inf that's not information. That's my experience. That's going to create curiosity. You know, Hey, tell me more. How did that happen? And that actually did happen. One of my chiropractic colleagues went through our program and lost 50 pounds in six weeks and just like totally blown away by what his body was capable of came off his diabetes medication and is now coming off his blood pressure medication without drugs without testing without supplements by simply getting him to unlock the built-in features that his body already has and the last one is outcomes how are you measuring outcomes for us we're measuring hrv 
we're, we're measuring satisfaction rates with our clients. Uh, we're also measuring what is the impact that our care has had with this person, not just for them, but are the people around them also benefiting and improving from working together? So those are the five you know, areas that we really try to focus on uh, with our clients and in and, and helping them build their business. And, and really, there's so many more things right to building a business. But I think those five are a great uh, place for people to place their awareness. Now, just so you know, um, my phone was right here and people love to text me as opposed to speak to me uh, DM or live or whatever. So I'm getting a whole bunch of people that are in your mentorship program. So I think we should let everybody know that you do have a mentorship program and how they can get in touch with you. And the mentorship program is for people like me, docs who are uh, practicing, maybe a new doc who's need a, a landscape, maybe a, a flow chart. So how can they get in touch with you? Well, I appreciate you asking. So uh, our mentorship is based around three things. The first one is personal development. So we want to really develop the mindset, the health of the practitioner, uh, the, the worldview that that person has, you know, shifting them from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset and, uh, and really focusing on themselves. I view the practitioner as the trunk of the tree. Their health, how they show up in the world is a function of uh, you know, of, of the efforts that they're taking to take good care of themselves. And then everything that branches off of that tree trunk is a function of the tree trunk. So the only way to grow all the branches is to grow the trunk itself. So we want to really focus on personal development. And I think that really separates us from a lot of other services out there. We also want to develop them clinically. So we have clinical coaching and guidance that we provide. And we also provide them with business tools to grow their practices. So it's kind of like, you get a bit of like Tony Robbins and you get a, and motivation and personal development. You get clinical knowledge and, and skill set. And then you also get practical business knowledge. What we also do in our mentorship, which I think is unique as well, is we share all of our assets. So any presentations I've done, I share with my clients, any lead magnets I've created, any email sequences I've created, any templates that I've created, even our manual that we give to our uh, clients We've created all of those in a way that's easy to white label. And so you could just take off our logo, put your logo on, and you've essentially got a, you know, a system and a business in a box. So that's another key factor for us. People can go and learn more at uh, perfectpracticementorship.com. And everything that they need to know is laid out there for them and, uh, and listed for what's included. And it's just a fantastic program. They get accountability. They get uh, small group coaching, they get coaching with myself in a group setting. And then they also get specialty training that, you know, we test first in our practice, make sure it's working. And then we share it with practitioners. So they're getting a proven process that is working right now in this moment. Outstanding. And the book, how can they get in touch with it? Let me get it right there. Oh, uh, thank you. So you can go get it for free. You just have to cover the cost of shipping. It's www.get perfectpractice.com. And we'll be happy to send that over to you. There's an, also an audio version for those of you that want to jump right in. So you can always upgrade your order and get that as well. And there's lots of great tools and resources that we're always happy to share. So thank you for you know the opportunity to share that information. Appreciate it. Thank, thanks for all the nuggets that you shared with everybody. I know you're a busy man. I appreciate all that you do for everybody. And what I really like is your positive attitude. It just seems so effortlessly to get into that positive mindset and start helping people because uh, we were talking before, everybody knows you always get the opportunity to go over some things and we concurred that we have the greatest job in the world because we get to make a healthful impact on others and there's nothing more valuable and a lot has to do with the approach. And thanks for sharing the nuggets with me and everybody else. We have to have you back on. Everybody, Dr. Sasha Patel, I'm Dr. Rob Silverman, always yours in health. Thank you, appreciate it so much, Doc.